What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released the iOS 13.5 Gold Master version to registered developers and it should be out to public beta testers later today as well. Now this is the same version that the public will be receiving as early as tomorrow, but definitely sometime this week. Now Apple did also release watchOS 6.2.5 today to the public, which we'll talk about near the end of this video. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what's new in this GM build because there are actually a couple things that have changed. We're gonna talk about the battery life, the performance, the bugs, and more. So anyways, let's go ahead and start off with the size and the build number here. So you can see the size was 4.16 gigabytes coming from the fourth beta. This is on my iPhone 11 Pro and it should be a very large download since it is overriding the whole system for a GM build. Now if we go to our settings and check out the build number, let's go to general about 13.5. You can see the build right there, 17F75. And once again, that's the same build number that the public will see when they get iOS 13.5, again, as early as tomorrow. Now the modem firmware continues to go unchanged. So this is still at 1.06.00, which it's been for quite a while now, I believe since beta one. So you're not gonna see any kind of improvements in terms of cell connectivity or anything like that. So since this is the exact same version that will be released to the public very soon, I'm not gonna cover everything that we've already covered in the previous four beta videos for iOS 13.5, since this GM build is essentially beta five for us developers and public beta testers. But of course, once 13.5 is released to everybody, to the public, I will be making an in-depth review of all the new features and everything like that. So stay tuned for that one if you have not been following my beta coverage over the past month or so. But like I said, there are some changes in this GM build that are different from beta four. So I wanted to cover those. And the first one, of course, has to do with the new COVID-19 tracing. So if we go into our settings here and go to privacy and then to health, you can see right here we have the COVID-19 exposure logging, which has been there before, but there's a couple of things that have changed. So the first thing I noticed that's changed is the actual description before you go into the actual menu itself. So right here it says, when enabled, iPhone can exchange random IDs with other devices using Bluetooth. This enables an app to notify you if you may have been exposed to COVID-19. Exposure logging cannot access any data in or add any data to the health application. So that's a little bit more concise and a lot more informative than it was in beta four and beta three. This has changed with like every single beta, the verbiage right here and the actual menu itself as well. So you can see here it says COVID-19 exposure logging and it says off, it didn't say that before. It was just a menu to go into and we go into the menu, you can see here this has changed as well. So just for comparison, I have the last beta, beta four here on the left, and of course the GM here on the right. So you can see instantly, there's a lot more information here in the GM bill, which is going to be released to the public. So not only do we have the exposure logging up top, but we also have active app. And then down below that we have exposure checks. So that is the new thing here, the new menu item in this section. So below that it says, this is a record of all requests to check your exposure log from the past 14 days. And then if you tap on that, it will ask for your face ID. Once you put that in, it will show you if you've been checked, you know, by I guess the devices that have checked for your exposure status. And of course I have not been logged, you know, I have nothing in my log right now, so it's not gonna show anything, but that is there. And then also we have the delete exposure log that's grayed out. Whereas before you could click on it, even if nothing was in there, you could click on it and it kind of just wouldn't do anything. Uh, but now this is actually grayed out if you're not able to delete anything. And it also tells you down there that there are no random IDs on your device to delete. Whereas before it had different verbiage down there at the bottom. So just difference in verbiage. And there's also a learn more right here. So you could click on this and get a lot more information about it. If you're confused, it is a very confusing feature for a lot of people. If you have not been following my videos, that is. So that's nice that you have a learn more there to learn more about this feature, which is very beneficial. And again, it's not going to track you. It's not like an inside job by the government all kind of crazy theories out there, but it's pretty safe. Now, I also wanted to talk about the Face ID feature included in iOS 13.5 that allows you to easily get into your phone if you're wearing a mask. So obviously with everything going on, most people should be wearing masks and it can be pretty hard to unlock your phone via Face ID because a lot of times it'll just sit there and you know wait, it won't register your face, so it'll just stay locked and you'll have to swipe up to get to you know the passcode screen where you type in your passcode. But now with 13.5, makes it a lot easier and pulls up that passcode screen right away once it detects you're wearing a mask. So it has been working really well here in beta four. I think it was better than beta three and beta two as well. And I would assume that the GM is going to be exactly the same. And it's gonna be very, very accurate in detecting when you're wearing a mask. Although I do wish there was some kind of little text on the screen that showed, you know, like mask detected or something like that right under the lock. That would be nice, but 
it does work well. And again, that is a new feature here in 13.5. Now, I also want to mention that a big bug I had in iOS 13.4.1, I didn't really talk about it a ton on the channel, but I have been having it quite frequently, maybe like once a week or once every two weeks. I have this bug where when I pull up the share sheet, it's just blank. I don't see anything there. No icons. It's just a blank white screen. And I just kind of swipe down like this and then reopen it and they're there. So I don't know what causes it. It happens mostly to me in messages or when I'm going to send somebody a message. And sometimes I'll actually do this and send a message to somebody. And then after that, I go back to the screen and it's blank and it just like bugs out. I don't know. But in iOS 13.5, that has been fixed. So if you were having bugs with the share sheet or any kind of issues with the share sheet, those should be fixed here in iOS 13.5. Now, as far as other bugs go, a lot of people are also having issues with mail still. And I feel like I say this in every video, but you're probably gonna have to wait till iOS 14 before you see a full fix for the mail application in iOS. It's gonna be buggy. I mean, people are having the, where it shows the icon, where it shows the badge for like two emails and you open up your email and you have zero and then it has to refresh. And then you see those two emails, it's kind of like a, a delay. And then some people also mentioned that they still get duplicate emails for some reason. So there's still a lot of issues that need to be worked out. And once again, Apple should fix those in iOS 14, but unfortunately it doesn't seem that all of them are fixed so far in 13.5. But let me know if you guys are having those issues because I cannot confirm that was just in beta four that people were having those issues. So if you were having those, let me know in a comment down below if they have been fixed. Now I'm still having the issue with Instagram audio when creating a story. So basically if you add like music to your Instagram story and then you go out of the app while that music is playing, it will still continue to play in the background and you can't pause it unless you go back into the app and press the stop button right here. So pretty annoying and I have not seen a fix for that yet and even the GM build right here. So it may just be an issue with Instagram that they need to fix, but that's still not fixed here in 13.5. And some people are also having issues with connectivity with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I've not had any issues, but you can see here, Zohan left a comment on my beta four video saying he's having some pretty annoying issues with both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I've not been facing those, but if you guys have, let me know down in the comment below and especially let me know if the GM build here has fixed that for you. Now, as far as performance goes, performance seems to be about the same to me as beta four. It does not feel much different at all. Now I did run some Geekbench scores and you can see here, beta four scored a 1334 single core and a 3475 multi-core. And then 13.5 GM right here up top scored a 1338. So four points higher in the single core and then a 3472, which is three points lower on the multi-core. So pretty much the same, but you can see down here a difference from the first beta to you know the final version of 13.5 here. So pretty nice improvements over time with the betas, but I would not expect a huge performance increase going from beta four to the GM. But if you are on 13.4.1, and you're going to 13.5, you should see a nice little bump in performance. And as far as battery life goes, battery life, I've really had no complaints at all in a while with battery life. So battery life to me seems exactly the same as it is in 13.4.1. Even on the betas, it was pretty consistent with what I get on the last public release. So really no complaints for me as far as battery life goes, but of course that will depend on your device, your battery health, and your daily habits when you use your phone. I also wanted to talk about the latest AirPods Pro update, which I mentioned in my beta four video. So in that video, I actually said how a lot of people had issues and this new update made it worse. Well, since then, I've not really seen any complaints about this latest update. So I assume that it's fixed all issues that you guys may have been having with your AirPods Pro, but I don't know because I never had issues to begin with. But if you have, let me know if that new update actually fixed those issues for you. And if you're unsure if you're on the latest version, which you should be by now, but it's 2D15. That is the latest version for the AirPods Pro. And it should fix a lot of the issues that some people we're having like with crackling noises and disconnects and things like that. Now also today we got watchOS 6.2.5 released to the public. So this was not a developer build or a GM build. This is the actual public release that got released today. And if you see there, the build number for 6.2.5 is 17T608. And as far as what's new in this update, you can see here we have some new watch faces. So we have the Pride Digital, which is this one right here, which is pretty cool. It has like the rainbow right there. And then we have the Pride Analog right there. And that's what this watch face looks like. So these are both new here in watchOS 6.2.5. Now there's also two big features coming to Saudi Arabia with 6.2.5 and that's the ECG features. 
are coming to Saudi Arabia and also the irregular heart rhythm notifications are also now available over there. So that's pretty big if you are living over in Saudi Arabia and you have an Apple Watch. Now you should also expect some stability improvements with this latest update. Of course, we should see some bugs being fixed, maybe better battery life, depending on the issues you had previously, you could see a nice improvement with this update. So yeah, that is iOS 13.5, the GM build that was released to developers today. Once again, it should be out to public beta testers later today as well. It may be out by the time you're watching this, I will have an update in the description when that does get released. But as far as if you should update or not, yeah, you should go ahead and update. This is the GM build. It's exactly what everybody else is gonna get either tomorrow or sometime later this week. I would assume it's either tomorrow or Wednesday when 13.5 gets released to the public. So just know that when you do update to the GM though, you will not get that update that everybody else gets. So since you're already on the GM build, you're not gonna get the public release because it's the exact same thing, exact same build number and everything. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss my next iOS video. Also, make sure you guys follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. I will have those linked down in the description below as always. I love interacting with you guys over there. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.